TV. Good afternoon, new breeders. Max here. I'm here with Milo Silvestro, the new singer from Fear Factory. Milo, how you going, mate? I'm doing amazing. We just played the first show in Melbourne, and uh, we just got off stage, and the crowd was really insane. You know, Australians never disappoint. Fuck yeah, we don't. <laughs> Now, new breeders, we're introducing a new segment here on the show, and it's called Having a Milo with Milo. Milo with Milo. Now, for all you people that don't know this, Milo is a classic Australian chocolate malt drink. And now, Milo, how are you finding the Milo? I find it delicious. There you go, there you go. So Milo likes Milo. <laughs> Milo proves Milo. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're enjoying an Aussie treat. We bought it for him as a little gift and he's loving it. So, and we all love it here in Australia as well. Yeah, Milo, first time to Australia, mate. First time to Australia ever. Yeah, and loving it. Uh, just just some beautiful country, amazing food, uh, amazing people and, and amazing everything, landscapes, whatever, animals. So, yeah, you went you went to the zoo the other day and seen some wildlife. Yeah, well, I know those who know me well know that I'm an animal freak. I love all animals. I'm a reptile dad. I have two lizards. I have a blue tongue skink. Oh, what have you got? I have a blue tongue skink, which is native of Australia. Even though my my blue tongue skink is an, an Indonesian one. Okay. But I know there are a lot of Australian blue tongue skinks. And what's his name? His name Bluetooth. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. We've we've got a snake at home as well, so oh, I know what it's like to live with reptiles. Oh, uh, it's fucking cool. I always loved reptiles. I have um, I had an iguana for 15 years, and uh, it was it became like a huge monster. When you pass away, I'm like I gotta have more scaled babies, and uh, so then I got a leopard gecko and a, a blue tongue skink, uh, which right now my dad is you know uh, gently taking care of them. So thanks, dad. <laughs> He's not exactly a reptile person, so... <laughs> He's the reptile granddad. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. But, but yeah, you know, I love reptiles and animals in general. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with Australian animals. I, I, I was like a little autistic kid, the new animals such as echidnas and, and like uh, Tasmanian devils and, and uh, platypus, you know. And have you ever seen a bearded dragon? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We, we used to have them as pets. Right. Uh, they are they are so tame and they're like they're the best lizard to keep as a pet. I know, I know. It's one of one of the best, you know that I know the temperature must be really high. That's the only thing yeah. to keep in mind with if you want to You need heat lamps. And, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I know it's 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 a great pet. Uh, I wish I had I, I want to have a lot of reptile pets, but you know, especially now that I'm touring, it's it's, yeah, it's a challenge. Fun. But uh, yeah, I I we have been to the San Koala Century in oh, Brisbane, yeah. and we enjoyed the shit out of it. You know, it was really cool. We got to pet the the koalas. We we got to pet the kangaroos, kangaroos. and feed the kangaroos. Yeah. I was obsessed with kangaroos. The, did you see the stick insects? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it in the video. Yes. And uh, I was obsessed with kangaroos when I was a kid, like so obsessed. So is is this a dream? So finally seeing one in person, you were just like, oh my god, it's a dream come true. You know, and. Uh, I but I, um, I gotta say, at first I was a little bit nervous because I know kangaroos can do you know, damage if they kick you. You know, they can kill you. The big ones. So like, yeah, you're fucking bolt up. <laughs> so at first I was like, oh, you know, when I when I was trying to feed them, you're a bit like, a bit like, oh shit, and then yeah, and yeah. they they're really friendly. All the small ones. Yeah. And and I was and I was really shocked by how friendly they were. You know, you can tell where uh, they, they have been um, socialized yeah. for years, for probably for generations. And uh, they will let they will let you pet them, and just hang out with them with, yeah. with you and feed them. And and it was crazy. You know, we were all feeding kangaroos. Me, Dino, Raw from Machina. You know, feeding kangaroos and petting. It was really cool. That's sick, that's uh, sick. Now you played an awesome show tonight. Um, me and Seabomb were very impressed, weren't we, Seabomb? Turn the camera around, and C-Bomb's filming at the moment. There he is, the, the C-Bomb. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Now it's been good hanging out. What's your favourite song to sing live? Ah, it's difficult to pick up just one, but I would say Resurrection is one of my favourite for sure, for sure, because um, it has this special like emotional meaning for me, and uh, and, it, and when I sing it, I get really like like literally goosebumps, and and you know it. It, it strikes some chords and you know that's that's a fucking powerful song man yeah. that's one of my favorites one of it's a great way to finish finish the set i think that's a really good pick for a last track i think it's awesome yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah yeah it's a powerful song and that that last bit that reach for the sky like the end of like it's it's an epic song like start to finish but then that it just ends on a fucking even more powerful note yeah i mean i feel like it gives people hope because you know the the thing per se that is called resurrection kind of gives you it, at least that's how I I feel it. it. I feel like it's a song that gives hope. Like even when you think certain things are dead in your life, you know they can come back to life, and and it's, it's a really powerful message. You know, so it, I, I can. It's got a real positive vibe to it. It can lift you up when you're feeling like shit, and it's just fucking powerful, man. Yeah, well, actually, got me through fucking horrible times. You know, uh, songs. Fear Factory songs such as Resurrection, Therapy for Pain, and Expiration Day, you know, got me through yeah. some of the toughest shit. Yeah. And there are a lot of the, so a lot of the, I really love the big, epic songs at the end of like, you know, like, every album's got that one track that's like the big, the big anthem. Yeah. yeah, it does. And like, those ones are the ones that, when I started getting into Fear Factory, really like drew me in and the ones that I'd kept going back to, you know, like, yeah, like Resurrection, Final Exit, um, Expiration Day, like Expiration Day is is amazing. So yeah, those big songs got me into Fear Factory like as well. Yeah, absolutely. Expiration Day, I, I remember clearly the first time that I heard Genexus for the first time. It was in streaming, live stream on YouTube. And when I, when he got to Genexus, I lost it. it is, I mean, Genexus, uh, Expiration Ex Day. Expiration, yeah. I lost it, just yeah. fucking cry like a baby, you know? Yeah. It, I was like that with Final Exit. Oh, Final Exit, same thing, you know. It's just, just yeah. very powerful. When I heard it, I was like, when I listened to the to the to the CD for the first time, I was going through the album and I was like, I hope there's, I hope there's that big song at yeah. the end, and Final and Final Exit come on, and I was just like, fuck, and this is, this is my favorite song on the album by far. Like those big epic songs at the end, and I love the way that. The albums are constructed like that, and then they have the big one at the end. So I hope the next album, I hope you, I hope there's a big banger at the end for us. Absolutely. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna match all the typical Fear Factory formulas in that way. You know, we're gonna have the melodic song, the the closure, and uh, the you know the more melodic like melodic but still like groovy like the sand you yeah. know you're gonna have the the bangers and the the groovy and ripping song the edge the, crushes the soul yeah, hackers yeah the absolutely bangers. absolutely <laughs> i i think fear factory when they when fear factory go to to the groove you know area like those songs they they do great you know they, they have a unique groove to it they get everyone moving i've actually got a question i wanted to ask so how are you finding performing Fear Factory on a tour cycle basis and doing it night after night? I think like a lot of people would be like, yeah, I could probably sing a Fear Factory song if I had to try. But to actually perform full sets night after night, how are you, how are you managing that? Because you, you, you've sounded amazing on everything I've seen. You've just kept, kept it going really well. And yeah, yeah, like your voice now is very sounds very normal like do you sing in that different register so that it doesn't affect your talking voice and your normal voice well i i would say uh well first of all my my huge luck is that my both my parents are professional musician and my mom is a singing teacher yeah. so uh you've she, learned the techniques yeah she helped me a lot especially during the the, the, the year before the first static x tour she helped me a lot with you know like going through the technique because i I'm primarily a drummer, uh, but as far as singing goes, singing for me was more like a self-thought kind of thing. So I, I, I took some tips from my mom every now and then, but never took it like 
as, as serious drumming. It was more like uh, uh, a need that I had to to vent, you know, to uh, I need a band where I sing and write lyrics and vent some some anger, and that was it. But when I got the gig with Fear Factory, it was like, okay, I have to make sure that my technique is screaming, but also the clean vocals. It, it it's can uh, back up a harsh tour because you know even even super good singers in they they can have you know bad nights and yeah. uh, so she helped me a lot and um, so I I built an even I guess an even more sturdy technique that helped me to uh, release some strength of vocal cores you know she she helped me into uh, to do like warm ups and warm downs and yeah. stuff like that I do war I do do uh, cool cool down I do a lot of warm up though yep. and. Uh, but she also helped me to project the sound more in the mask because sometimes when we uh, think about like high notes, especially like Fear Factory songs like Lynch Band, you know, yeah. we, we think about pushing, you know, but I discovered uh, with her that po the power doesn't just come from how much hair you put into your vocals, but also from your mask, you know, so if you use your mask as resonators, it takes some of the string away from the vocal cords, and that that was a game changer for sure. Yeah, right. yeah. So, so a lot of technique involved, and a lot of practicing, and trying to get that so that you can project it more without having to like physically strain your vocal cord. Absolutely, and I would say a bad clean singing, especially with those high notes, can can be more uh, can do more damage to your cords than a good the screaming, gr than the growl, yeah. than the low one. Yeah. So, uh, because if you're, if you, uh, if you have a good screaming technique, growling technique, you're using it properly. So, you, what I do, which is what Bert did, it's it's like a mixed sound between uh, false chord, fry scream, and, and and shouting. So you use a little bit of vocal cords, false yeah. chords. So you can project the tone yeah. through through the through the the growl, I guess. So there's a note there. Right, right. Exactly. Bert had a lot of toy. He was probably one of the first. In that era, you know, with uh, it, it, it was it was a vibe back then, you know, like Rob from Machine Head, uh, Phil from Pantera, of course, they had that the uh, tonal kind of scream. You could you could hear the note, but it was it wasn't like a normal singing. It was it was rough. It was uh. so. Um, but Bird had had his own unique way to do that, and uh, so of course I I was I always been a lot inspired by him, but. When I got the gig, I went back and studied his vocal style even more to make sure that all those nuances were there, you know. And uh, like my scream before Fear Factory was way more, um, I would say, uh, uh, guttural-ish, you know, more yeah. like I'm a lot inspired by singers like Des from Cold Chamber, you know, Johnny from Spine Shank, and you know, so uh, Wayne from Static X, which they have way more like a um, raspy guttural. Uh, but yeah. Burr was more gutty you know use a lot of guts a lot of energy and so i i went back and studied that that approach and uh yeah i've definitely we've definitely noticed that the technique like from when you first like from your vocal auditions to watching the live videos to listening to you tonight like you've really progressed i guess up to and you like you do sound different than what you did and you can you can I like, can tell that you've put in the work. Yeah, well, thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy that there was a, a, a recognized progression. Yeah, progression. I'm happy that, that you can tell it's a progression. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're doing well, man. You're doing well. Um, C bomb. Is there anything that you'd like to ask Milo? That was the main thing I was curious about because I've always I found you know. <clears throat> Death metal growling is just not the same as what that is in Fear Factory, and I think that's one of the things I've always loved about the vocals in their sound. But whenever I've tried to do it, I've just been like, I can't get past just a guttural growl to actually hit that fry, that fry scream midway between the guttural. It's super impressive to see anyone pull it off. So my hats are off to, to what you're doing, man. I think it's awesome. You're really, really good. What I would say another thing that I uh, worked on while st studying properly burst style is n is not just the the um, the way you you make the sound you know you actually pr uh, create the sound but also the way you pronounce words like like for instance resurrection there are 
parts where he goes like, there is the word revive, and he says, revive. So he was stretching yeah. the words, and that's part of his style, you know? And, it, and, and, when you're, and when you're singing along to it, like you're trying, or I do, I try and like emulate how he sings it. I don't just sing it in my own style. Like every time you sing Fear Factory, you try and sing it the way that it sounds. Do you know right. what I mean? Right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, because I think that's a unique style. You know, like a lot of singers could have go, could have went like revive. Yeah, it's revive. Right, right, exactly. So he had his own way. You know, I was at first. Dino wanted me to um, to have some um, pronunciation coach lessons because he was like, your English is good, but. I, I want to make sure there is no imperfection. You have to sound as native as possible because, of course, you're from an L.A. famous band. You have to sound as American as possible. <laughs> as American as possible, bro. So um, I kind of had the American sound because of my parents that, that raised me on American music, you know, and uh, but... And when, like, when I naturally sing, even though I'm Australian, like, I sing in an American accent. Right. Like, right. it's just... <laughs> I don't know. It's just a natural thing that we do. Yeah, even even the Beatles. You know, a lot of bands from the UK. They when they sing, they sound more American because I think that's because American English is a lot uh, harmonic. He has a lot of overtones. You know, all, all these colored R's. You know, so yeah, more. They don't slur as much. So yeah, it's. I mean, if we if you sung a Fear Factory song in an Australian accent. <laughs> That would be interesting. Though. It'd be funny. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be good, but it'd be funny. <laughs> it would be. You guys should try one day. Oh, me and me and a couple of my mate, one of my mates, we send each other like Fear Factory, like like Aussie voice impressions, just as a joke, and we're like, you know, oh, I was conceived so violently, there was no love, there was no love for me. It sound, it. it sounds terrible, but it's like a joke between us, and that. And, and the, re the reason it's so funny is because it's so bad, like so, so bad. Filled with pain, bruised and darkened soul. Like it's fucking terrible. But I love it. <laughs> you know, it's so cool. I love yeah. it. It's, it's just, it's just funny. You know. it, is, it is. It's funny. It's funny. All right, Milo. Thank you for joining us on the first New Breed TV edition of... Milo with Milo. It's, an it's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. It's nice to meet you. I would like to add that, uh, as you guys know, as you guys know, but probably somebody doesn't know yet, uh, it's it's because of your Facebook page, the New Breed Facebook page, that I was uh, spot by Dino, because that's where I posted my first cover, and I didn't even know about the audition, and uh, so I have to give more, you know, props to you guys for for uh, the page and, and all the words that you're doing with uh, Fear Factorium and stuff. It's really an honor for me. Thanks, mate. Me, me, me and Seabom are the admins on there. There's also other admins. Julian, who's created the page, and, and Hoodie and Riv, who's contributed over the years. Thanks to the admins on the page. You guys, we've all done a good job, I think. Um, and the page has grown and it's turned into a really good Fear Factory community, a lot of positivity, and it's been, it's been a page that's just been a pleasure to be a part of and to contribute to so and yeah thanks for you to for also contributing to the pay oh it's thank you it's it's an really well in the end we've got we've got an amazing singer fronting the band now so congrats you yeah, know awesome congratulations all right milo thanks for the chat man thanks man cheers thanks mate hello guys it's joe and, and you know what time it is Disco time! I can't help it, man, the problem! I can't hide except empty words! I know the lion, tell my face! We're hurting manufacturing! Hey, what's up? This is Milo Silvestro from Fear Factory, and you're watching New Breed TV! G'day there, love, how you going? You're a fit. You're a Fear Factory fan! What's your favorite song? Cars! Oh, you like cars. <laughs> <laughs>